Are you having difficulty managing your time? Do you feel overwhelmed with all of the different things that you have going on? Running a business, juggling multiple jobs, doing house chores, social media, family, personal time, dealing with health problems, school. Does this sound like you? If so, you have come to the right place because in this video, I'm going to go over 10 time management tips to make you money and help you get control of your life. Now, for those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Dominic. I go by the Primetime Treasure Hunter here on YouTube. I run a part-time reselling business, selling stuff on eBay. It feels like a full-time business. I also run a Facebook group dedicated to reselling called the Reselling Resource Center, which has 23,000 members. And I run a reselling Instagram page at prime underscore time underscore treasure. Now, outside of reselling, I work full-time as a neuropsychologist in a hospital, sometimes working 11-hour days. I've written two books in my profession. I run a medical website and a medical blog, both of which are businesses. I have a wife and two kids and have been known to coach basketball. And yes, sometimes I cook, do the laundry, pay the bills, and other chores. So the number one question that I get is how the heck do you do all this? Here's how. So every day it's important to establish what are the most important things that you need to get done and focus on those over everything else. Now, if you're having difficulty figuring out what those priority tasks should be, they tend to be things that if you don't get them done that day, it will snowball into a problem the next day or pretty soon after that. These tasks also tend to be things that are associated with your main income source. So full-time job responsibilities would be a great example of that. They also tend to be things that you have established for yourself as goals that you want to try to accomplish. So let's take the example of uh, wanting to get 10 listings done for your reselling business. This could apply to someone who's uh, full-time or part-time, just modify the numbers as uh, is appropriate for your business. But let's just say it's 10 for this example, and you are working on that. That's your main goal you wanna get done. But then uh, at some point during the day, you wind up making three sales. Well, now that is going to be something that has to take priority at some point if you cannot get those 10 listings done. You've gotta work that into your day somehow. That is what I mean about priorities sometimes need to shift because this is a customer who has now bought something from you. Money has come into your business, so you've got to take time to ship it, you know, pack it, get it out there, and that's more important than getting up a listing right then and there because that's potential money, but this is actual money, an actual customer that came in. So when you get that done, then if you haven't gotten those listings done, that goes back to priority. You start working on those and then you might get an important email that comes in or the kids may really need your help or it may be time to make dinner. So those are obviously real important things that you have to work in as well. And so you shift your priorities within the day as needed. You try to get this main one done but if you can't, so let's say at the end of the day, after all this, you still had two listings and you couldn't get them done. Well, now you priority shift that into the next day. You carry those two listings over and try to get them done there. Or you just cancel them out and you just start at 10 the next day and try to get them done from there. So it's very important to plan ahead so that you know what is coming up that's important, not only within the same day, but also the next day, later on the week, later on the month, or even several months out. A good example of that would be being aware of tax filing deadlines so that you could plan your paperwork uh, ahead of time so that you're ready for it. Now, if we want to go for an example within the same day, let's go back to the uh, schedule that I was uh, showing you earlier for day one. So let's add to the mix here that we wanna be at Johnny's baseball game at 5 p.m. So that could require shifting our priorities depending on where we're at at let's say 3.30 and it takes a half an hour to get to Johnny's game. 
So we got to be thinking about this throughout the day. You got to think ahead of time. So we might say to ourselves, you know, at about 3.30, hey, you know, I could get another listing done. I could get one of these things done for the kids. And I could even squeeze a little chore out here. But this email, it's important. I've got to take care of it. But I'm not going to have time to take care of it now. So I'm going to shift that until later on after the game. And so you've got to constantly do that and be reevaluating and planning ahead based on that. Also, uh, look ahead uh, for your week in advance and try not to plan too many big things going on at once. So if I see, for example, I've got a lot of stuff going on on a Thursday and there's something else I need to plan, I'm not going to put it on that Thursday. I'm going to put it on a different day. So make sure you plan ahead. Eliminating the small stuff is one of the most important things you could do to manage your time and also decrease your stress. So let me give you a great example of this that I think happens to a lot of people. So let's say you have some you know, goal that you're trying to do throughout the day. It's a priority of yours. I'm going to keep things consistent. So let's say it's the 10 listings that we want to get done. And then at some point uh, during the day, you open your email and you see that you've got 25 emails sitting there. You open up the first one and you look and you see, wow, this is like, you know, this is a time consuming thing. So you start trying to respond to it. But at the same time, you're also feeling a lot of stress because there's 24 other emails that you haven't opened yet. Well, what you should do instead is put this time consuming email to the side, especially since you have this priority goal that's more important than that email that you're trying to get accomplished and start opening up the other ones. And look, look what you'll find out. You'll find out that most of them or maybe all of them are either junk mail uh, or they're really small things that just require a quick response to somebody. So what I do is I eliminate all this stuff first so I don't have that stuff sitting there and stressing me out. And then I'll focus on this one later. I'll go back to this task. And uh, I do the same thing with little errands that are going on or edits to eBay listings that I need to do or reorganization of my workspace. I'll just knock out those quick little things first and then I'll focus on those bigger things. Now the approach that you're going to take throughout the day is really going to depend partly on how much stuff is going on because certain days are busier than others no matter what you try to do to plan for it. It's just the nature of what happens sometimes. So there can be some days that are relatively light and quiet, but then other days, things just are going crazy. You know, you, uh, you're you trying to get something done and you've got a ton of emails coming in. At the same time, you've got several voicemails. You've got a ton of social media notifications all over the place on different platforms. Uh, you've got a bunch of text messages coming in and everything. You're dinging all over the place. Sometimes what you need to do is just shut all of that stuff down and just ignore it and focus in on what that main thing is, that priority that we talked about earlier. So other times you might be able to do some of these things while you're accomplishing those other tasks. We'll talk more about that a little bit later. But certain times you just have to shut everything off, go dark for a little bit, focus on that task, and then come back to those smaller tasks later. Again, it really depends on how the day is going. So a flexible approach is really key here. Avoiding procrastinating is a big one that a lot of people struggle with. And it's really easy for me to sit here and say, don't procrastinate. It's a lot harder to do that. But the best piece of advice that I could give you that could help you to avoid procrastinating is to remember this. The goal is what drives you. And the word drive is very important. You need to be driven. If you're driven, you're motivated and you're action oriented. If you're procrastinating, you're not doing much. You're sitting around. It's really the opposite of being action oriented. So keeping in mind what your big goal is and what your sub goals are that help you get there will prevent you from sitting around too much and watching too much Netflix or too much YouTube or whatever it is that you're spending time doing that's taking you off 
task of what you need to do. And so it's really important to make sure that you are monitoring yourself and you're being honest with yourself and telling yourself, you know, yeah, it's good. You need a break every once in a while. That's certainly important. But at the same time, are you taking yourself off too long from what your main goal should be? So really important. Remember, the goal is what drives you. Now, one of the greatest difficulties that people tend to have with time management that really contributes to them feeling bogged down and overwhelmed is a great difficulty or sometimes almost an inability to say no. And this tends to be because the person is concerned that the person asking them to do something might get mad at them if they say no, or that person might try to give you a guilt trip if you say no. And the problem really gets even worse if you tend to have a personality that's more passive and uh, agreeable. And so before you know it, you've now taken on six or seven things that don't have anything really to do with what your personal goals are and what your uh, business goals are. And so I'm not saying not to take on uh, other tasks that are outside of that, not to try to do things for others. Of course, you should try to do that. But you also have to be mindful of how much stuff that you're taking on and also be aware that you don't literally have to say the word no to somebody. There's diplomatic ways that you can do it. One of the best ways to do it is just to tell somebody that you really do have too many things going on right now. You're really stretched thin and you have a lot of things on your plate. And another good one is to say you don't really feel you could give the attention to the task that it deserves. So that's really important. So be diplomatic. Keep those uh, main goals of yours that you have in mind, because if not, before you know it, you know, you're going to get, uh, like I said, bogged down and overwhelmed. So make sure also to be firm because people will sometimes be pretty persistent. And so you've got to stick with your answers. Now, we talked earlier about the importance of having goals that you set for yourself, and it's great to have those goals in your mind, but it's another thing entirely to write those goals down. When you write them down, it makes them feel more real. And when you display them somewhere that you're going to constantly see when you're walking past it, that helps keep those goals fresh in your mind. And it's another thing that you could do that helps to fight off procrastination because you're constantly seeing it. One of the things that I really love to do is not just write things down, but one of my favorite things to do is after I accomplish the goal is to cross it off or wipe it off. So if I get those 10 listings done, I get great satisfaction of just going like this because that makes me feel like I eliminated something, I accomplished something, and that keeps me motivated, it keeps me going, and it makes me want to get the next thing done. So study for the exam. Great, we're going to get that done as well. Now I'm motivated to make sure I get that accounting done for the day. Cross that out. And I remember what my day started like. I had all these things on here. Now I've got to go grocery shopping. All right, great, I'm going to fit that in and come back. Ah, look, I feel great. I've got everything done for the day. If not, then we talk about that priority shifting and moving things over to the next day. Writing things down, uh, it's great to put things, you could put them on a notepad, you could put them uh, on a calendar. Here's my calendar right here. Some of you can kick it out with the comic stuff, but um, you could use a daily agenda. I used to use that all the time in college and just you know meticulously plan things out. Uh, and uh, cross them off as I uh, go along. So highly suggest that. Now, one of the most important strategies that I have used to help me accomplish big tasks is to find a way to break those big tasks down into smaller tasks. And that's something that I refer to as chunking. And I'm going to give you an example of that through, let's say we want to put up 100 listings somewhere. And so you can see that right there is the main goal. The problem is that for a lot of people, that's going to feel like just too big of a task. And that could lead people to feel overwhelmed. And when people feel overwhelmed, their motivation goes down and they tend to procrastinate, which are things that we want to avoid. So what we need to do is to find a way to make the goals seem more attainable. And the way to do that is to break it down. So instead of thinking of it as 100 listings, uh, 
Well, what you do is you divide it out into a 10 day plan. And so your 10 day plan is 10 listings a day. Now let's say you wanted to get up $1,000 worth of inventory and you couldn't do that all in one day, well then you just add an extra zero here and so that's gonna be now a monetary value. You're gonna list $100 worth of stuff a day. And that's how you just try to apply that to any kind of plan. I used to use that when studying for exams. If there were 100 pages that I had to read, I would look ahead on my calendar, see how much time I had to do that. And if I had 10 days, then I would break it down. I'd read 10 pages a day. Uh, the books that I showed you earlier, I didn't just write those books in two seconds. I planned that out. So I wrote one or two pages a day, and that was it. And I set aside time to do that and focus on it, made it a priority. And so um, that's what you've got to do. Break those big goals down into smaller ones. Now, speaking of things that can be hard for a lot of people, there are some people that have a real difficult time accepting help. There's many reasons for that. A lot of people like to be independent uh, and that's an admirable trait, of course. Um, there's a lot of people who have really high standards and they don't feel comfortable with letting anybody else into help because they don't feel that that person could do things up to that standard. But as a result, the person winds up taking on a too many aspects of the business or too many aspects of whatever it is that they're responsible for. And as a result, that person then starts to feel overwhelmed. And you've got to be honest with yourself and realize when you're feeling that way, uh, it is time to ask someone to help you out. It could be small things like asking someone around you to help out with a chore or something like that. But it could also involve starting to bring people into your business, having people take photographs for you for your listings, having people do listings for you, having people um, you know, come on and uh, start you know, listing their own inventory, like Mrs. Primetime now. Uh, my wife is listing jewelry in my eBay store. Um, I used to be the only person who uh, ran my Facebook group, and uh, now I've have seven people who help me in terms of moderating it because I can't manage 23,000 people uh, by myself. A lot of people who run YouTube channels have moderators that help them during the live show to just keep in, uh, keep in touch with what's going on in the chat. So uh, these things are important in all aspects of life. You have to be willing to ask for help and also, very important, you have to treat that help nice. Uh, you have to make sure that uh, you are showing them that you appreciate what they're doing for you um, because if not, they're going to leave you and then you're going to be stuck doing everything by yourself again. So make sure you treat them well. All right, now when I've got a ton of things going on, one of the techniques that I'll sometimes use is something called multitasking with chunking. So this is a little advanced primetime tip if you've stuck around this long. Thanks a lot. So um, let me give you an example of this uh, by using the board again. So what I will do is take whatever the most important thing is that I need to do, and I'll make that first. So let's say it's getting a listing done. So I'll work on that listing, and I'll try to get the listing completed, and then I'll move on to whatever the next task is. If I've got a lot of emails, I'll try to respond to some of the emails. It could be one, it could be two, it could be three. I'll just pick a number and try to stick with that. Uh, then let's say I have a lot of social media notifications. I'll go to those. I'll go to Instagram. I'll go to Facebook. I'll go to YouTube and try to respond to comments, that sort of thing. Then I'll go over and, um, you know, maybe I have a text that I've got to get to. These things here tend to be smaller tasks that I want to get done as opposed to this big main task right here. And then uh, I go back to the listing and try to knock another one of those out. Now, it could be that there's something else that winds up uh, that I need to get done. So let's say I need to get uh, chores done. So then maybe, you know, a chore winds up going right over here and a listing then winds up going uh, over here again. So it really depends on how many things you have going on. Now, if things are really crazy or really busy, sometimes I can't even get the complete listing done, but I want to make some movement, some action towards that goal. So what I'll do is I'll focus on getting chunks of that listing done. So for example, I'll upload the photos and write the description and then I'll get an email done and respond to a social media uh, 
message. And then I'll go back to the listing and I'll fill in the item specifics, get the title all good, get the pricing set and the shipping, and then um, you know get that one listed. And so sometimes you have to chunk within the multitasking just to keep things moving along. And you have to do it in a very systematic and consistent way. But if you stick with that, that really can be something that helps you, keeps you focused and keeps you disciplined. All right, everyone. Well, that's it. Those are the 10 time management tips to make you money. Let me know what your favorite one was down below in the comment section. Also feel free to leave your time management tips down there as well. Remember, time is money and every one of those tips will save you time and help you regain control of your life. Remember, these tips are meant to be complementary of one another and you use them in a flexible manner depending on whatever situation that you find yourself in. So that's it for today. And uh, I am though going to leave you with a Daisy outtake. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Daisy is my uh, pet Shih Tzu and uh, she's pretty famous here on the channel. She even has her own Instagram account, at Miss Daisy Wobble. So uh, go check her out over there. But I was supposed to go to uh, an estate sale and the estate sale got canceled. So I was filming a little piece that I was going to put the beginning of the video. And since the estate sale got canceled, I can't put it there. So I'll just leave it for you here at the end. Here is Daisy the reindeer. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Well, good morning, Daisy. You dressed up like a reindeer today? <laughs> Look at her outfit. <laughs> oh my God. She just got a haircut and everything. She's got a new little, we got her eBay boxes that just came in. She's got a pink bow tie in her hair as well. Oh, big yawn, right? Well, I'm the one who's got to do all the work. I'm going to head out to an estate sale right now. You want to come along? All right, let's get out there. See what we can find at that estate sale.